Let's look at a technique uh, involving complex numbers where we're going to find the roots of a complex number. And we'll start with example one. Um, look at the equation z cubed equals one. Now just think about that for a second. Though. If I said solve x cubed equals one, your natural in instinct would be to take the cube root, and clearly we get one real solution, which is the number one. But what we're able to do with complex numbers, <clears throat> now that we know about the exponential form of a complex number, we're able to think about, well, if we take the cube root, we should be expecting to get three solutions. Like we know a quadratic would normally have two solutions, a cubic would normally have three solutions. So we're working with a positive cubic. Um, two of them are going to be complex, but one of them is going to be real. Okay, now the way that we do this, <coughs> first of all, we need to look at the right hand side. And we're going to write this in exponential form. Obviously for this first example, the number one is a distance of one away. So R would equal one. The argument, well if it's on this initial line, the argument would be zero. So we could say one is equivalent to one e to the zero i. And obviously that should be fairly obvious, e to the zero is equivalent to one, so we've just, what we've done here is we've rewritten this in, a, in, this, in an equivalent form. Okay. Now if we cube root this, we're still only going to get one answer. Remember we're looking for three answers. And the key sort of technique in this topic is, first of all, write it in exponential form. Second of all, we need a way of figuring out the other solutions. Now, if we just look at this diagram, theta equals zero is not the only possible representation at that point there. I could also have said theta was equal to two pi, because if we rotate through two pi, we're back at that point there. So equivalently, I could have written one as one e to the two pi i. I could have also used theta equals four pi if I wanted to, because we'd have done two full rotations, but we'd still be at that same point. So what we could essentially take from that is that there's multiple possible arguments. It's not just zero. It could be two pi, it could be four pi, it could be minus two pi as well. So we add to our power, once we've written it in exponential form, we add two pi and i. And there's got to be an integer. It could be positive, it could be negative, but it's got to be an integer. And then that's the way of counting other solutions, which when we cube root, we'll be able to go back to and figure out what those solutions were. Okay, so step one, exponential form. Step two, include this with your power. And then let's just cube root. So if we cube root, think about it as we're raising it all to the power of a third. And um, once the power of a third is, is still one, and then if we think about indices, power to a power. We can multiply the powers together, and two pi times by one third would be two pi over three. So for this one, it says we want to get our answers in exponential form. So once we've got our expression for n, we could just let n equal 0, n equal 1. And for this question, because we want it to be between minus pi and pi, you could use n equals 2. But if you do that, you're going to end up with 4 pi over 3, which is slightly too big. It's not a disaster if you do that. You can just rearrange it from there. I'll show you what I mean now. So if we look, we can, if we sub in 0, uh, 1 and 2, obviously we get the number 1, which we already knew from the beginning was one of our roots. And um, we get e to the 2 pi over 3i. And if you do sub 2 and it's not a disaster, you get e to the 4 pi over 3i. And if you visualise what's going on here, 4 pi over 3 is uh, 
around about here, isn't it? It's like one pi plus one third of pi. So four pi over three would be equivalent to minus two pi over three. And to avoid that problem, instead of subbing zero, one and two, we could have just subbed in zero, one and minus one, and that would have given us our three roots straight away. Example two says, draw an argon diagram showing the solutions to z to the six equals 729. Now for this first one, we're Essentially, you're looking for six solutions, aren't we? Because when we take the sixth root, we're going to represent six solutions. If we write it in exponential form, again, for example, two, we are literally along the real number line, 729. So R would equal 729. And theta would equal zero. But any multiple of 2 pi as well, so plus 2 pi. And i. And then we'll take the sixth root. So if we raise it all to the power of a sixth, we've got 729 to the power of 1 sixth, which is 3. I did just check that on the calculator, but it is 3. And then we get e. If we divide, if we raise this to the power of 6, we're, we're multiplying it by 1 sixth, so 2 pi. Divided by 6 would be pi over 3, n i. Um, it doesn't actually ask us what the solutions are, just as drawing I on our diagram showing the solutions, but obviously now we can sub in n equals 0. And again, it doesn't specify what the argument is between, so I'm just going to sub in 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and we would get e to 0, which is 1, so 3. And obviously, 3 is our real root. Um, so 1 in, so that would be 3e pi over 3i, 3e, so that's 2 pi over 3i. If we sub 3 in, we get 3 pi over 3, also known as pi. Now be careful with this one. And we'll see what I mean when we draw it. Um, that number, 3 e to the pi i, if the argument is pi and the magnitude is 3, because the argument's pi, we're back on the real number line. And it's probably better if we write this as minus 3, because we've turned this way through pi, we've moved 3. Clearly, we're on the real number line, and we're negative 3. We've also got 3 e to the 4 pi over 3, and 3 e to the 5 pi over 3. OK, so there's a lot of symmetry when we take the roots in the, on the argon diagram on the complex plane. So our first root. Apologies for my appalling cycle. <laughs> oh dear, it's not good, is it? The first root is 3. Another root is minus 3. And there are six roots altogether. So if you think about it, they will be evenly spaced out every pi over 3, which is like every 60 degrees. Obviously, when you guys do this, you can use a compass and a protractor because it's important that you get these sketches accurate. So we've got six solutions, six roots, which all lie on a circle of radius three, each of them evenly spaced out. OK, 
Okay, so last example for this video. This is very similar to like what comes up in exam style questions. This, so this could be an exam question. It says solve z cubed equals this. So obviously we want to take the cube root, but we're expecting to get three solutions. Now before we can do this, we have to write it in exponential form. Okay, so do a quick diagram. So that distance is 43. That distance is 4. So let's just think about what's the argument and what's the magnitude. Again, you get this common ratio that you, you if you don't spot it, it doesn't matter because you can just use Pythagoras and trigonometry. But that's equivalent to this triangle, isn't it? Like it's a similar triangle. Sorry, not equivalent. It's a similar triangle. If you had a one and a root three, that would be a two. And thinking about the angles, that one there would be thirty degrees, also known as pi over six. You can just again, you can just use Sokotella. So we've got a similar triangle to this. So that would be eighth. But I mean, just use Pythagoras if you're not sure. That would be eighth, and that angle there would be pi over six. Okay, so we're going to write, first of all, in exponential form, this is equivalent to 8 e to the pi over 6 i plus 2 pi n i. Got to remember to do this, because then when we cube root, we'll get our three solutions that we're looking for. Okay, so if we take the cube root of this, cube root of 8 is 2. We want to take the cube root of the power, so we're raising the power. So we're multiplying the power by a third. It's like this whole thing is to the power of one third. So if you think about this being raised to the power of one third, multiplying side by one third, we get no useful trick. Because obviously we want to get the three solutions. It's not a big deal when there's only three of them. But if you're doing like the fifth threes or the sixth threes, and you have to do this six times or five times, I would recommend that you, before you start subbing the values, just take a second to get a common denominator for this. So just write it as... If you think about this, with a common denominator, it makes it much easier to sub in n and add these fractions together. So obviously, two thirds would be the same as 12 eighteenths. And then now, when I sub in n equals zero, I would get 2e to the little 10 is zero. We've got pi over 18. If n equals one. It doesn't specify what the arguments have to do between, so I'm just going to do zero, one, and two. We would get 2e. Okay, so now we can say we sub 1 and we've got 12 18 plus 1 18, so it's easier to do that, isn't it? 13 pi over 18. And n equals 2. So that would equal. Okay, so that would be 24 over 18 plus 1 over 18, so 25 pi over 18. That's bigger than pi, isn't it? So if you think about where we are, we are down here somewhere. Um, so alternatively, if you, if you do want the argument to be between minus pi and pi, you could just sub in minus 1 and that would give you the argument straight away. Okay guys, thank you.